Speaking of strong recommends, our final film this week is this movie that is in theaters on October 15th. If you don't, if you're like me and you still don't go to theaters, you can actually catch it on demand. This is a movie called The Blazing World. It's co-written and directed by Carlson Young. She's also the lead in this movie. of a whole series of planes of existence. Hello? Mom? Hey! Honey! Oh, my little girl. Is it possible for someone to be uh, trapped in another dimension? The physical or the metaphysical realm? Can someone be taken against their will? By what? Can they be brought back if they're trapped? Be afraid. We met before. Don't you remember? <laughs> what are you? She is imprisoned between life and death. Let me bring her back. She is held by three demons to open the door, find the three, and take their keys. And I warn you, they're not going to be as nice to you as I am. Name your price for the key. Darkness eats. Darkness keeps. He knows she is behind the door. There's something inside of me. It burns. The key, please! Let me have it! Open the door. Take us back! She plays a young woman, a quote unquote self destructive young woman. In during her childhood, when she was just a kid, she lost her twin to a drowning in their in their house, and it was due to a she was actually. She left her twin and was going off and seeing her mother and father arguing through a window. That tragic event obviously has had its reper- repercussions on her family, you know, even now, 20 years on when she's a college student. So that scar understandably still stays with this family who inhabit the blazing world. This movie, it seems like a family drama, but nope, it's really a nonlinear, surreal movie that it maybe takes pages out of Joe Dorowski or or David Lynch, or, or just so many different Alice in Wonderland. There's a lot, Tim Burton, there's a lot of visual references to this movie. The movie also starts Udo Kier as sort of a sort of a gateway, this, this sort of, in, he introduces her to another world, this blazing world that this young woman played by Carlson Young might believe. She might, she believes she might be part of another dimension and not the real dimension. So it's a very interesting movie because most of this movie takes place in this blazing world, which may be in the young woman's dreams, or it might be an actual different dimension. Bruce Perky was the first person to see The Blazing World. By the way, the parents are played by Dermot Mulroney and Vanessa Shaw. Let's start off with you, Bruce. What did, what are your honest thoughts about The Blazing World? I think, what was the first thing I mentioned to you? Um, well, I guess I mentioned that it immediately had the trope woof. of, yeah, woof. I think woof was the first thing I said, not good woof. And I think I mentioned that it had immediately had the trope of cutting carrots. And I was like, can you, can you cut carrots without cutting a finger in a movie? I guess not. It's impossible. And then I was like, oh, this is a vanity project. And at first, this was before it switched to the young girl grown up. So I thought it might be a vanity project for the the mom the actress playing the mom. Vanessa Shaw, yeah. Yeah. And then I watched the whole movie. And at the end, I looked at the IMDb and I discovered that, oh, the woman who's acting as the main actress in this is also the writer and the director. Okay, it's a vanity project. <laughs> but this, okay, how do I get at this? Um, it strikes me, you know how you have that kid in high school that's like 
praised their whole life about what a genius they are. And no one ever gives them any criticism on anything they've ever made or written or done. That's are, are, are you what, talking to me, Bruce? Or, or yeah, what? <laughs> that's what this seems like. And unfortunately, there's okay, there's homage and then there's clipping. And we talked about like, you know, Tarantino, right? But he's right. got such talent that he basically can steal stuff, but he still somehow makes it his own. But then you have other things like, I don't know, Scary Movie 4, where it just says, hey, remember that? Doesn't that look like something you've seen before? Hey, look at this. And you mentioned a few of them. I just wrote down a few of the ones that came to my mind immediately. Pan's Labyrinth, Don't Look Now, The Cell, Twin Peaks, Neon Demon. Oh, this is someone who's seen Neon Demon and thought that was the first time that ever happened. They don't uh, know anything about anything before Neon Demon. Whoa, that's amazing. Alice in Wonderland. This is this is insufferable. Uh, this is one of those movies where I definitely felt like the time was stolen from my life by watching this movie. Wow. Well, well we, will we say this again? Last year, it was The Painted Bird starring Udo Kier. And this one, The Blazing World starring Udo Kier. Which movie do <laughs> which which movie do you foist upon your worst enemy, Bruce? Mm, the Painted Bird has much more artistry. Okay, this movie Fair. does not. This movie is Where, like. Remember when we saw Behemoth? Remember all the digital effects in that thing? Right. This is like that, but it has less fun. Okay. Is this one of your worst of the year? Oh, for sure. This movie is oh, terrible. Terrible. What movie. I'm getting from Bruce is that as time goes on, he's loving the Painted Bird more and more. Yeah, it's and true. so as time goes on, he will love the Blazing World more and more. I'm gonna get to you, Eric. If in they a second. keep coming out with shittier movies, I suppose it's true. Eric, I'm gonna get to you in a second. I just might very quick mini review on my end. I thought I I like this movie. This movie again, going back to what Bergman Island, not for everyone. It is very surreal. I all the digital effects. I like the fact that Carlson Young, it seems like she created a very personal story about tragedy and trying to deal with it via your own fantasy world. I like that. And I like what, what she was going with the visuals. It, it doesn't, a lot of it sometimes is just surreal. doesn't make sense. Might not click with everyone, but she just, she just went for it. And ultimately I think she, it worked at the end. The ending was nice. I, I like. I like. I like the ending. It, it it stuck the landing. It did not stick the landing for you, Bruce. I thought it. This movie. I was. I don't waiting. think it stuck the beginning for Bruce either. It, <laughs> it like. didn't stuck stick anything. That, it nothing stuck to the wall. The beginning. It stunk <laughs> the end. It stunk the middle. I really ended up enjoying the Blazing World. I would give it a solid recommend with the caveat going to Bruce's review that it is a, a movie that will have a, a huge amount of detractors. And you're going to have a wide variety of opinions. And I really credit Carlson Young's scope and ambition at telling a story that she really wanted to get out there. And yeah, I just thought it was pretty courageous. Overall, I, I was I was caught up with the movie. So I would recommend. Eric, your thoughts on The Blazing World? Well, I'm uh, I'm definitely on the love this movie side. It, it reminded me a lot of, uh, and I, I don't, I'm not a fan of The Labyrinth, but it reminded me of that and that you're going through a, a uh, uh, fantastic like a, it, it's a fantasy movie um and it, it has you know fantasy elements um and it's it's nice to see something like that uh i mean bruce you mentioned pan's labyrinth I, I think this is more i think this is more wizard of oz where it's it's got the the light you know the light fantasy to it but there's something sinister about it and i don't other than when she goes to unlock the you know there's a the locks that Key, she yeah. has to unlock mm -hmm. And then the part where uh, she has to go, you know, because she goes through the doors and she has to confront a different aspect of her own depression and her past, you know, when she goes in went, uh, to see her dad in that in that world, it definitely gets dark. But I think a lot of this movie stays like really bright, um, like that that desert that desert planet she went to, you know, it it looked like a. It it looked like something you would see out of labyrinth where it's it's bright it's it's um kind of uh, oh this is a this is a nice kids movie that we're watching but then there's just that little something just right below the surface it was kind of making me put me at unease yeah I I, I like this one a lot I oh, love a lot I, wow I, yeah a, a lot I I love the beginning the beginning reminded me of uh, the beginning of Antichrist minus the penetration <laughs> uh, but. You know, just having the having the two uh, twins playing and something tragic's about to happen while the parents are being selfish and 
uh, you know, fighting rather than taking care of their, uh, you know, <laughs> there's that thing. Um, Eric, let me ask you a then, question. Oh, but okay. then, okay. so yeah. I got a, so I watched this movie and immediately I'm like, oh, fuck, this is, this is fucking awesome. And then I went and found the, uh, the, the book, um, the audio book. It's got a full title. It, the description of a new world called the blazing world uh written by margaret cavendish and so i figure that oh i'll, I'll listen to this uh i'll listen to this audio book uh, it's about four hours long and i'll i'll kind of understand more about what the blazing world um the movie is uh this has very little to do with the uh, the, the audio book the audio book's essentially just uh someone explaining to an emperor they're just basically describing earth to him or like a like a utopia and that's it like I, if you ever read the bible like genesis like uh it's just you know once they get past the seventh day and then at you know can enable all that stuff happens and so and so begat so and so so and so begat so and so so and so begat so and so and there's like pages of that before it gets to any sort of story bible's a really wonderful book really well written by the way <laughs> but uh the the blazing world is kind of kind of like that but then uh like the last half of it gets to where one of the characters describes creativity to him the, the the character describes you know you you rule this world you know you rule everything in this world but what does that mean and it's like well i'm the emperor i rule everything and like yeah but you're only in that you only affect a small part of it at any one time because you can only be so many places at this world and then she describes like um creating to this emperor and it's like if you cre- learn to create a world in your head you can you know rule the entire world but you can also be a part of the entire world you can meet everyone in the world and then she's like oh that is great i shall create my own world in my head and then that was the key right there i was like oh okay this is this is what this movie is she's not but in the so in the book the character is describing a utopia so when they when they create the world they're creating a utopia this is the other version of that so she's going to the blazing world but she's going there damage you know she's got the mental damage so she can't create that utopia she's creating basically a prison for herself and so that that's all the that's all the stuff i got out of this and just reading through the book and kind of kind of unlocking unlocking the mystery made it a lot more a lot more powerful for me is it possible for someone to be uh, trapped in another dimension well Doctor Who certainly thinks so. You should watch his work. It's on the BBC. Are we talking the physical or the metaphysical realm? Either. Well, theoretically, yes. To enter any room, there's a door. So it stands to reason the door may be stuck or locked. Or guarded. Can someone be taken against their will? By what? Can they be brought back if they're trapped? If this door is is unlocked? I see. What did you say your name was? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not crazy. I'm just... It's just, just not working. Sometimes if we don't like the answers the world gives us, we keep looking. We go down rabbit holes. Trust me, I'd know. What if there's something at the bottom? Excuse me? What's a rabbit hole? What's down there? Bruce, did Eric Holmes just go rabbit hole on this movie? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, that's what Alice in Wonderland does. <laughs> it goes down the rabbit hole. That is an amazing <laughs> interpretation. What do you think, Bruce? Did, did it sway that you sounds a bit? like a great movie. Let's uh, have someone make that movie. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm so, you know what, this is what it's about, us disagreeing, we have different, look, Eric, to Bruce's point, like about it being one of the worst movies of the year, when someone asks you about this movie, see this movie, if, if what, Eric? If you like, uh, if you like the labyrinth, but you want it to be a bit darker, I, if you want it, if you're saying to yourself, I wish a Lars von Trier would remake the labyrinth, <laughs> it's kind of on that level, I, I, I would think. 
Also, I, I got to kind of, I got to kind of point out. I don't. Do you know what the the budget for this movie is, dude? The girl. I mean, I mean, I don't know how old Carlson Young is. She might be in her early to mid twenties. I mean, yeah. probably not much of a budget. So, because I, I thought this movie was incredibly ambitious for yeah. a, like when I saw it, I just figured it was it was someone. It didn't seem like a first time director. And it certainly doesn't look like it was made on a budget that someone would give a first. Like, this looks like they spent a lot of money on on sets and and the uh, you know set design and yeah. all that sort of stuff. I I don't know what that sort of thing costs, but it can't be cheap. And like like all the all the lighting and smoke tricks they were doing in there, you know, the CGI was a little wonky in parts, but in other parts it looked pretty good. And so you know, but, there's but a- like first time directors, it's like uh, I want to do I want to do this fantasy movie. I'm a first time director. What's it about? Uh, here, read the Blazing World, and it's kind of based on that sort of, but not really. Okay, no, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give you we'll give you a million dollars. You know that. that this this seems like it this seems like it'd be like you know 50 60 million dollars at least that's but amazing I, but I, yeah. I have no idea so credit you're giving credit to the director and, and star right she, she are you excited to see what she has moving forward as far as in her arsenal because I, this is yeah in fact like she's I, I would like to see and i never say this i could see her doing a really cool like marvel movie like she like her her uh, I agree the the her um sorry Bruce I I'm agreeing with this <laughs> sorry I, but I mean say Rebecca Black had a hit song too the, <laughs> I like Friday okay no, wait, 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 sorry but uh <laughs> but the uh you know the, just her uh you know the way ah fuck where are the words I'm thinking of the way the, she uh, executed her vision maybe. Yeah, or, just just kind of like her the way that she did this movie, just kind of oh the mise en scène, the mise en scène, her aesthetic. Uh, yeah, her aesthetic. Style. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think her aesthetic lends itself well to a, a superhero type movie. So whereas like we were talking about Chloe Zhao with a uh, Nomadland, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, uh, do you really want to waste your time doing a Marvel movie because it's you know it, it might be good, but you're you she has her own aesthetic that probably fits better with her own movies but with this one i think she i think her aesthetic would just kind of fit right in there or like if they did like another like a dark crystal movie or fuck lord of the ring or a hobbit movie you know let's 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 turn up the color saturation they don't have to look so dour they're just moving the ring from one place to another i am so pumped eric holmes that you give a strong you love this movie you love the blazing world and I, i i'm assuming that you're gonna watch it again you really enjoy this movie i like this movie and not as much as Eric did, but I, I do recommend it. Strong recommendation from Eric Holmes. And then Bruce, again, do not see this movie if, or don't see this movie if period. you have eyeballs. <laughs> you have well, I got eyeballs. four eyes, so. I... <laughs> Bruce Berkey coming, coming down with some truth bombs. Again, so again the, blazing, the Blazing World in theaters on demand October 15th. It really, honestly, it doesn't matter what Eric says. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what Bruce says. That is what you guys think. We'd would love to hear what you think of Carlson Young's film, The Blazing World. Is she? Oh yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for sure. I, I I wonder I wonder how how much this is going to split people up. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, very quickly. One, one last thing, Bruce, and I apologize. There's this one moment where she's where the Carlson Young character she's with her friends and they go out in in a bar and it seems like it comes out of Twin Peaks and there's a singer and I know Bruce is just rolling his eyes at the whole thing. There's this one scene where they're when they're smoking and one of her friends is I think off screen. So when she smokes off screen, the smoke travels into the frame of the, the people in the frame. And I said, oh, that's a cool, that, that's a smart little shot. And I'm thinking, I'm just thinking, I bet you Bruce is just really rolling his eyes throughout this entire I was thinking, experience. what this scene needs is some gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that... I'm not wrong. On, on, on that, we can agree, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> on that, we can agree. Okay.